Hi, and welcome to Biology Exposed. Today, we're going to identify the role of enzymes in metabolism, describe their chemical composition, and use a simple model to describe how specific they are on substrates. To start off, this is some information that you need to know. Enzymes are biological catalysts that lower the activation energy for a reaction to occur. They are large protein molecules which have specialized shapes so that chemicals, such as substrates, or substrates can form a temporary bond with them. Metabolism is referred to as every chemical reaction that occurs in an organism's body. Enzymes lower the activation energy for a reaction to occur, but do not get used up. They are completely reusable. Okay, so here's an explanation. The first model we have is the lock and key model. In this model, basically, we have an enzyme. So suppose this is our enzyme. And we have a substrate. Some key things to learn here. This is our active site. This here is our enzyme. And this is called the substrate. Now moving on to the next step. The substrate and enzyme form together. Basically, joined together. So, this is my crappy drawing. I'm very sorry, but it's probably the best I can do at the moment. So, this is the enzyme and the substrate. So, this is what we call scientifically the enzyme substrate complex. Okay, so as you can see, this again is our enzyme and this is our substrate. From here onwards, we know that the enzyme reduces the activation energy for an, uh, a chemical reaction to occur. So the reaction will actually occur. And the one substrate that specifically only fits into this one enzyme, as you can see, obviously nothing else is going to fit into here except for this one substrate. And we know that enzymes are specific to only one substrate. So now we can see that the enzyme has allowed for the substrate to turn into two different products. So these are our products. And it has remained unchanged. So the enzyme itself remains unchanged and is unaltered in the lock and key model. So these are our products. And this is our enzyme, obviously. And now it can be reused again and again. Moving on, a similar model that we have, except it's improved, is called the induced fit model. Now, basically, the only difference between the induced fit model and the lock and key model um, are very slight changes. So suppose, in the lock and key model, we can see that the enzyme uh, is remained unchanged throughout the entire reaction. It is just the same thing, and it just binds with the substrate. As soon as it's binded, the products are formed, and nothing really happens to the enzyme. The only difference in the induced model is, I'm going to draw it out for you again, is now I'm going to use some pretty colors. So let's have a look. So this is, uh, this is our enzyme again, right? And this is our substrate, suppose. So once again, I'm going to label this enzyme and substrate. So in the next step, we once again have the enzyme substrate uh, complex. Uh, okay, so now let's just draw this out. The only difference, now this is the key thing that you need to uh, take into your mind right now. In the induced fit model, the only difference we have is that the enzyme itself actually changes to fit the uh, substrate. So I'm just going to say that this this is different. Like This is going to change just so it can fit this substrate. So this substrate fits inside. Yep, this substrate fits. It's changed. The enzyme has changed to fit this substrate. Now, once again, this is the substrate. And this is the enzyme. Now, it has changed to fit this substrate. Now, when it goes down to the second step, 
so when it goes down here and we see that the products are formed so this is it what's actually supposed to happen is that after it changes and the products are formed these are the products the enzyme returns back to its normal state so um, as my drawings are very crummy I'm gonna just explain it to you uh, a little bit better uh, the only changes between the induced fit model are that the enzyme changes when the substrate complex is formed. So um, let's just say you have a question and a test. What is the difference between the induced fit model and the lock and key model? The answer that I would give to this is basically that the induced fit model, the, s the enzyme actually changes when it takes in the substrate, unlike the lock and key model where the enzyme stays the same throughout. And in the induced fit model, as the enzyme changes uh, to take in the substrate, it returns back to its normal state as seen here. So in between these three steps, the enzyme changes to compensate for this model. So um, basically this is going to conclude the lesson, and I hope that I have explained dot point 1.1 for maintaining a balance well. Thank you.